Okay. I think so. Is this this thinking is? Okay. Is that it now? Can Can you see me? Uh huh. It's It's showing. Okay. Can you? Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. My apologies. Uh, I guess I am not a technical savvy person. <laughs> I, as much as I thought I was, but I, I guess I'm really not. And I lost those that are on the prayer line. So let me go back to the prayer line. Amen. Um, if I can get those that are on the prayer line, I think I lost those. For joining us in prayer, please enter your conference ID and press the pound key. The conference will begin when the next party joins. Okay, praise the Lord uh, again. Uh, my apologies for uh, my tardiness. Amen. Uh, but um, we're going to get started with uh, the lesson that I had for tonight, and I'll try to condense it and speed it alone amen that way i don't take up uh very much time uh but uh tonight i was talking about going to be talking about the uh power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness <clears throat> and amen uh coming out of matthew uh chapter number five matthew ch chapter number five and we'll begin reading at verse number 43 uh, verse 43 through 48 and then we'll jump over to Luke chapter 6 verse 35 through 38 Matthew 40 uh, Matthew 5 chapter 4 uh, verse 43 reads <clears throat> ye have heard that it has been said thou shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy but I say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you and pray for them which is on the evil and on the good send in the rain on the just and on the unjust for if ye love them which love you what reward have ye do not ev even the publican and s the same and if ye salute your brethren only what do ye more than others do not even the publican so, uh, so be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect all right, and then we're going to switch over to Luke chapter 6, verse 35 through 38. Verse 35 through 38. And it says, But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil but ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together and runneth over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that ye 
Um, same measure ye with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Um, definition of the power of forgiveness. The word for is before, on account of, to be given, uh, purpose, considering, uh, support, payment, towards, uh, give, freely transfer the possessions of something um, to someone, allowing, allow, permit, grant, offer, deliver. And and the suffix -ness is a suffix that denotes a state or condition, liveliness, kindness, wilderness. The secular and the biblical definition of forgiveness. Uh, the secular uh, de definition of forgiveness, the action or process of forgiving or being forgiven, pardoned, exonerated, clemency. The biblical definition for forgiveness is truth, belief, faith, mercy, mercy grace, all equals Jesus. For we see it in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And also when we look at Luke chapter number 24 and verse number 47, we see also a definition, biblical definition for forgiveness, and that repentance and remission of sin shall be preached in his name amongst all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And then we find a scripture that we will use for uh, a biblical definition for forgiveness is Acts, Acts chapter 2, um, verse 38, amen, we all know. Uh, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we move forward to salvation. What is salvation? Deliverance from sin, harm, ruin, or loss, and its consequences. Um, salvation is redemption, reclamation, uh, perseverance. Of preservations um, sin what is sin an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law wrongdoing misdeeds offense tres trespass so what is trespassing unforgiveness is what it is is lying pridefulness infidelity Superior attitude, cause to err, uh, coming short of God's glory, contrary to the holy character of God, deceive, defeat, defiant of God and his judgments, depravity, disobedient, dissemble, evil, false, uh, go astray, guilty, in spite of and contrary to the law, iniquity, sedition, law, lawlessness, made to stagger, missing the mark, offend, overcome, uh, query, rebel, revolt, seduce, to be defeated, um, to break away, to err, to fall, to mistake, to reel, uh, transgressions, uh, turning from the perfect will of God, ungodliness, unjust, unrighteousness, utter corruption, void of God's approval, wickedness, and evil. Sin resembles unclean animals is the ugliness and the spitefulness of a camel uh, barring um, secretive wily dis disposition of a uh, cunny a rabbit or a fox uh, is the filthy sensation of the, of the hog uh, stupid stubbornness of an ass uh, ferocity apathy of a dog or a wolf or a jackal or a hyena uh, savage ferocious uh, bloodthirsty like a tiger or a panther uh, and a lion, the sluggishness of a sloth. This is what sin resembles, the ugliness of an a animal, uh, the prowling shyness and cruelty of a cat, um, base treachery and mischievousness of an unclean beast. 
That's, that's what sin resembles. Uh, the metaphors of sin. Sin is poisonous like a viper. Sin is stubborn like a mule. Sin is cruel like a bear. Sin is destructive like a caker worm. Sin is unclean like a wild dog. Sin is cunning like a fox. Sin is fierce like a wolf. Sin is devouring like a lion. Sin is filthy like a swine. <clears throat> and that's what unforgiveness is. It's a sin. So when we look at uh, other studies to lead up to what I'm uh, talking about tonight uh, for unforgiveness, I look at the change of seasons. Uh, Joshua in uh, chapter 24, verses 1 through 8. And when we look at that verse, let me just read it. I know I'm trying to go fast and make up time here, um, being that I started late here. Um, but when I look at Joshua chapter 24, verses 1 through 8, um, it simply reads, And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and, their, uh, and presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thou, saith the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the, of the floods in the old times, even Terer, Terer, and the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacar. And they serve other gods. And I took your father Abraham from other, si other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I also, and I gave unto Esau, Mount Seir, to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And, and afterwards I brought you out, and I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your father with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hands, that ye might possess the land, and destroy them from before you. Amen. So, um, I know I'm not doing this lesson of justice, because I'm trying to rush through it, but um, maybe tonight I won't finish it. And uh, Lord's willing, if I get another opportunity, maybe I can come back and just do the lesson uh, justice. Amen. But this background uh, that we look at in Joshua that I'm bringing out with the seasons change um, is, is really uh, showing us how uh, through the process of forgiveness, seasons can change. And sometimes it can bring us to, amen, a, a place of forgiveness. Uh, but when we look at uh, Joshua, Jehovah is his help, uh, uh, Jehovah, the Savior, uh, the son of Nun, the, uh, of the tribe of Ephraim. Amen. He is called Je Jehoshua, uh, Yeshua, in Numbers 13 and 16. He was born in Egypt. He became Moses' minister to serve. He was also one of the twelve sent, to, sent by Moses to explore Canaan. Uh, under the direction of God, Moses appointed Joshua to be the successor. Six nations um, and 31 kings were conquered by him. Joshua divided the land amongst the tribes. He died at an age of 110 years old. 
uh, 25 years after crossing the Jordan. Joshua is regarded as a type of Christ, common name uh, for Christ, Yeshua. Uh, he led the people into the procession of the promised land and Jesus uh, will lead us into heavenly Canaan. Um, as Joshua's successor, Moses, and uh, Joshua's successors of the law. All right. So discerning seasons. Um, when I look at this, I got a number of scriptures that are uh, listed here. And I'm starting with Daniel's chapter 2, verse 20 through 23. And he changes the times and the seasons. And he removes kings and raises up kings. And he uh, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have have understanding. Esther 1 through 1 verse 13. Uh, the king said to the wise men who understand the time uh, for which was the king's matter uh, towards all who knew law and justice. Psalm 75 and 7 says, uh, but God is the judge. But he puts down one and exalts another. First Kings three nine and ten. Uh, Therefore, give you give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may, Amen. I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge with great people of yours? This great people of yours, the speech pleased the Lord, and Solomon had asked this thing. First Kings 4.29, and it says, And God gave Solomon wisdom, exceedingly great understanding, and largeness of heart, like the sands of the seashore. James 1.5, last scripture that I'll read here, and it says, And if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberty and without reproach, and it will give, be given to him. Amen. So when we look at this and we look at how um, people can change through time and through generations and not just only the individual, sometimes for unforgiveness can go a long ways. It can go through generations. Um, sometimes um, you can be upset over things and situation and individual people uh, for many years uh, off wrong information, or off bad information. Um, uh, that's why I've learned to uh, really give everyone uh, an opportunity uh, to be right or wrong. Amen. I, I have no preconceived ideas about who you are. Amen. Uh, I can only go by what you show me. But I know that through time and, 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 and through uh, change of seasons and people's lives, uh, sometimes we, um, we get over hurts. We get over things. We learn to move on. Uh, and so this lesson really gears towards showing us how uh, in the process of change, how one can really get over and what shapes people. Uh, and I, I, I started with generations and I look at the generations and I look at the great generation and those people who were born through uh, 1916 to 1925. And uh, they come through errors and most of those nowadays are passed on. We still have a lot of those who are still with us, amen. But they come through errors of the Great Depression uh, or they come through the uh, World War II era, amen. And so uh, they carried a lot of what happened during those generations with them. We look at the silent generation those who were born between 1926 and 1945, my mother's generation, uh, industrial generation. This is that generation who, amen, um, left their brain at the door and just walked through the factory and did what was told of them. Um, we see nowadays in this millennial generation, that is no longer the fact. Uh, but that generation, the silent generation, they worked in factories and they went to the military. Uh, they hoped that their children would do a lot better in life than they did. Uh, and then we have the baby boomers generation, those who were born from 1946 to 1964. Um, and this generation um, was a very large generation. 
uh, that can be compared to the current generation, the millennial generation, uh, based on their size. Um, and things that shaped that generation, the baby boomers, was um, dramatic social change. Um, the assassination of JFK, JF Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy, and Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, political unrest and civil unrest, uh, a lot of political movements, uh, women's rights movement, uh, the Vietnam War, uh, protests and riots, uh, social freedom. Um, amen. Um, and and um, liberal views on abortion, uh, homosexuality kind of exploded. Although homosexuality has been around uh, for some time, the first uh, sexual um, things that we see in the Bible was when uh, Lamish, the son of um, uh, Cain's grandson, uh, great grandson took for himself the bible says in in genesis chapter 4 verse 19 i believe it's around verse 19 uh where it says he took to himself uh two wives the first sign of perversion and sexual conduct uh that we see in the bible um so when we look at uh, go further generation x generation x is uh, my generation uh, that era those who were born in 1965 to 1982 and uh, they kind of flex with that number. Some say 1981 or 1980, but uh, that number is flexed a little bit. But uh, this generation, uh, their political experience and culture perspective was around Ronald Reagan and George Bush, uh, the end of the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin Walls, uh, the economic calamities, uh, the 1973 oil crisis, the 1979 energy crisis, 1980 recessions, um, start of home computers, video games. Uh, many folks in my generation, they remember uh, the Atari 2600 and Atari 5200, Pac-Man and, and Galaxy and, and some of those games that we would uh, uh uh, that started to bring us inside rather than always being outside. We were that generation that stayed outside to the, uh, the, the street lights came on. And, and when the street lights came on, we know that was a time when we had to go in the house. Um, cable TV, internet, cell phones. Uh, we were that generation that had cell phones that were so huge, looked like uh, big walkie talkies. We walked around with those and we thought we were cool because we had a big, large uh, cell phone with us. Um, uh, generation Xers, uh, they, we also held the highest education level. Um, many of us were the first uh, going to college or finish, finishing colleges uh, in our families. Um, generation Y. Uh, this is moving into the Generation Y and Generation Z is moving into that millennial generation. And, and the reason this is so important, it helps us to understand how to minister uh, to a generation uh, of now day, uh, because a lot of us are still ministering to a now day generation uh, with uh, feet stomping and clapping our hands. And, and this generation just don't know anything about that. Uh, sometimes they look at us strange and they look at us why uh, we're looking at them, why they're not praising, why they're not doing uh, what God wants them to do is praise. Well, they don't understand it because they they are growing up in a, uh, a communication technology. Uh, they started with MP3s and, and cell phones and cameras and uh, video devices all being one device. Um, uh, you know, we had a cell phone and a video camera, um, emailing and texting and, and uh, using social media, Facebook, MySpace, and and some of those older ones was MySpace and uh, YouTube. And we got all kinds of social media things now. There, uh, there are the generation of Barack Obama. Uh, that's their president. They, they don't know anything beyond that. Um, and, and this Generation Z is highly connected and uh, to high-speed internet and, and all of these things. Uh, um, cable TV is old school to them now. Um, a lot of folks don't even have cable TV. They have internet TV, Roku and Netflix and uh, Hulu and, and all of these things. They are highly connected. And I said that because what happened through the transition of time and the reason I looked at Joshua because Joshua was that watershed moment when we realized that the things of old 
wasn't anymore. And we had to move on to a generation uh, that was headed to something greater than what we came through. And if we don't watch it, we will, we wouldn't, we, we will miss uh, an opportunity to move forward in life. Uh, if not, we, we tend to hold things and wonder why people are not reacting the way we are reacting or the way we are accepting things. Uh, but uh, we have to learn uh, to forgive ourselves in order to move forward with the next generation and how they are perceiving and moving forward in the Lord. Uh, Joshua, watershed moment. Uh, Joshua uh, bid farewell to Israel for for their elders, uh, for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and, and said to them, I am old, advanced in age. And that's something that we have to realize. And Joshua, uh, but we have to remind them, Joshua uh, gathered all the tribes of Israel uh, at Shechem and called the elders and called them all. And chapter 24 in Joshua, you're, you, you're, you know, you reminded of when they would say, uh, Joshua said, as for me and my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. That's, those are the things that we have to be mindful of giving over to the next generation. Uh, things of God, staying in, in the word of God. Amen. So when I when I look at this and I go a little further and I'm going to jump ahead and it looks like I'm already at the end of my time. And like I said, I knew I wasn't going to do this lesson any justice, but um, uh, thank God for uh, the little time that I did have and uh, those who have to go. Um, 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 amen. I'm going to try uh, in the two minutes that I have left. I'm going to try and uh, just get to the end of this um, slide here. Joshua challenged the people. Amen. And and I called heaven and earth as witnesses today against you uh, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him for he is your life and your length of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Um, and then we see some of those blessings that is read in Deuteronomy 28, uh, verse 1 through 14. And Joshua blessed the children by saying, As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Forgiveness is always at hand, moving to the next generation. We have to not, in order to accept the next generation, we have to operate in forgiveness uh, because we're always going to see some things that we don't understand or we don't quite see how God is moving. Amen. Um, so at this time, uh, my apologies again. Amen. Um, God bless you all. I know uh, the lesson, uh, I didn't give enough to really uh, bring clarity to it. But I, I do apologize, Lord's willing, if I'm able to do this again, um, I, I, I promise you uh, it's a good lesson, a uh, great lesson, a lot of meat in this. Uh, but uh, um, my, my basic uh, principle here is the power of forgiveness, the power of forgiveness. And, and we as people of God, we always have to walk in that, in the power of forgiveness. I know sometimes life happens, we get stuck in places, and um, we can, it's possible for us to walk in unforgiveness. Amen. Uh, I can say here, uh, I, I have done it, uh, and but bless the Lord that he brought me through transitions, transitions of time and life uh, to give, bring me to a greater understanding of how to forgive and move forward. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And uh, we do pray to uh, do this again in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.